What's going on everyone? Ains here, Season Gaming. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, but also really more of a kind of long-term review, partial long-term review, of the most recent scuff controllers for Xbox, which include the Instinct and the Instinct Pro. So I've been talking about these controllers for a little while now. I was going to do this video a couple months ago, but just due to other content obligations I had to do, uh, as well as wanting to use the controller a little more before doing this video, um, I wanted to make sure that I had a really good handle on the controller's performance, any degradation I started to notice or anything like that. So I'm going to break down the details between the Instinct and Instinct Pro. I'm going to break down my experience, how it compares to the Elite 2 and other kind of performance controllers, um, and all those details. So uh, before we get to that, of course, if you enjoy the content, you know the deal here. Give us a like, give us a sub. We would really appreciate it. I'm also going to do timestamps, so if you want to look at one specific piece of the controller, you can find that below. But let's get into it. So Scuff introduced these new Instinct controllers for the Xbox using the Xbox Series X and S controllers as a foundation. So instead of the uh, old Xbox One and say Elite shell. So first things first, let's talk about kind of pricing because these are expensive controllers. So the Instinct is 170, it's 169.99, it starts at 170. And then you can get it with a case, some extra niceties and some extra thumbsticks for 205. The Instinct Pro adds a few features, which I'll get to, starts at 220, so 219.99, and then you can get it with a case, extra niceties, et cetera, thumbsticks for 255. And they can both be customized, so custom colors, thumbsticks, all this kind of stuff, and that can bring the price obviously up and up and up. Before you know it, you can get an Instinct Pro that's around $300, which the price of a Series S, pretty crazy, right? So. What comes in the box? This is the Instinct Pro, as I said. Nice packaging as always from Scuff. And it's pretty straightforward what you would expect. So when you first open it up, you'll get this nice presentation. You get this nice manual on the controller. And the controller, which of course I will get to, sits here. It also comes with, you pull this out, you get a nice Scuff braided cable. I believe it's nine or 10 feet. Uh, let me see if it's on the packaging here. Uh, of course it's not, but I think it's nine or 10 feet if I remember correctly. You get this little box that gives you a couple extra thumbsticks that you can swap out with the cable. And then of course you get your safety information and just other you know stuff. That's about it. It's very straightforward packaging. So <clears throat> the difference between the Instinct and the Instinct Pro are worth calling out. And there's a reason of course that the Instinct Pro is you know, upwards of $60 more expensive. Whether or not it's worth 60 more for these features is up to you. But first things first, <clears throat> the Instinct has, well, let's start with the Instinct. So the Instinct itself, it has custom scuff thumbsticks, it has custom scuff bumpers, triggers, has these four paddles that are these new ergonomic shape we'll get to. It has a mic port and mute that is built onto the controller here. And then, as I said, you can customize the rings, the faceplate, and everything else to go along with it. The Instinct Pro adds this scuff kind of backing, which has this texturized grip you can see here, um, which is very, very grippy. It's probably the best grip I've ever used on a controller. Um, so it adds that. And most importantly, I think if you're a competitive shooter player, of course, it adds these trigger stops, which you should be familiar with, of course, but on this Instinct Pro, it switches them to a mouse click. So if you've never used a mouse click controller before, um, it's very fast and very precise. You, you barely have to move your finger at all, just like a mouse, to activate it. So obviously you're familiar with your normal trigger. You switch it to a mouse click and it, it barely moves at all. And you can hear, I'll put it right up to the mic, you can hear the clicking. So it's very easy to just, you know, kind of very fast fire off shots. That is probably the best feature of the controller. So of course they stick it behind the $60 premium. The last thing you can do if you want to on an Instinct Pro is you can tell Scuff to remove the vibration or the rumble mechanisms inside. So if you're not gonna use vibration and you're using this as a competitive controller, usually you turn vibration off because it's distracting, right? Or can mess with you. Um, it'll obviously make the controller lighter, but you can customize it that way if you want to. So <clears throat> let's get into the controller itself and using it and what that feels like. 
I customized, they had a deal running really, where Scuff, you could customize all the rings and colors and everything for free. So I got the Instinct Pro for standard price, but that's why you see it, it's blue. Kind of did it in the season gaming colors of gray and blue. And uh, you know, it, it's a really, really nice controller. It feels a lot nicer than your standard Xbox Series X or S controller because of the faceplate and grip and paddles and everything. Um, and it's just a, it's just a nice controller, which it damn well should be, right, for the price. So I also customized it. I traditionally use a long aiming stick. So you can see that the aiming stick here is longer here than the thumbstick. And I've got my Elite 2 that I also use here uh, where I do the same thing. Now you may notice it's probably gonna be really hard to see on this, but it's not quite as tall as the Elite 2. So if you're someone who uses a tall aiming stick on the Elite 2, it is a little shorter than that, but it still uh, you know, gives you that extra kind of accuracy if you, if you want it. So let's talk through each of the kind of core details. First things first, the scuff faceplate and these uh, grips on the Instinct Pro. As I kind of alluded to earlier, the grippingness and holding it is probably the best feeling controller I've ever held. Uh, and I mean that genuinely. So the series, uh, you know, two elite comes with the grips on the side, as we all know, and it, it generally feels pretty good. But if you are one of those people like me that thinks the Series X and S controller is more ergonomic slightly, um, when you combine that with this really soft touch panel on the front and this grippy texture on the back, when you've got the controller in your hand and kind of lined up, um, it is just phenomenal. It's, it's really, really well designed. So I can't compliment that enough. Sadly, like I said, you're either gonna have to do that yourself or you're gonna have to get the pro version if you want this grip, which of course is why they do it. <clears throat> Next are these new paddles. So Scuff has caught some flack in the past for having those long paddles that used to stick off the back and they weren't really designed very well. These ones you can't remove, right? Because they're integrated into the shell of the controller as you can see here. However, um, I'm sure it's personal preference and how you hold the controller. But for me, these work extremely, extremely well. So as you can see, when you hold the controller like this, basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to kind of pull in your finger like you would on the Elite or uh, the Edge even on the PlayStation side and click that and it's very precise, it's very short movement. But the other thing is your finger's sitting here and you just push outwards and that clicks the other paddle. So it's this very, very slight movement. You can see my finger barely moving. Uh, very, very slight movement that allows you to activate the trigger both directions and that of course is true on both sides. So now if you hold the controller a little, you know, if you have like a unique way you hold the controller, those might not be great for you. But if you hold it kind of like a normal human being, <laughs> I say that jokingly, of course, uh, this is gonna be very great for the paddles um, to integrate. So I would say that between the grip and these paddle activations, some fantastic improvements out of Scuff, and I really enjoy the design that they put forth on the, uh, the Instinct here, and Instinct Pro. So next, of course, I have to talk about the uh, the triggers with the mouse clicks. When I first heard about controllers starting to do mouse click triggers like the Battle Beavers um, and now the Scuff, I was like, okay, what's that mean? What difference does it really make, right? Um, it makes a pretty nice difference. I will admit, once you get used to this kind of instant activation where you can just fire off very, very quickly and you barely have to move your finger, um, again, it's just one of those really kind of niceties to have if you're a competitive shooter player or a competitive player in, in other games that you really need to activate quickly. When you compare it to even the Elite 2, which as most of you watching this will know has kind of the uh, <clears throat> the two stage thing where you can make it shorter or shortest. So when I'm playing competitive shooters, I have it on shortest, but it still moves a little bit. And as you can hear, you get this kind of block clicking because it's activating. Whereas on the, uh, the scuff, it's just this nice little mouse click and it's even shorter throw. So I think those features, right, um, between the grip, the triggers, or not the triggers, excuse me, the paddles and the triggers, uh, it just makes a really nice combination for a competitive controller. And uh, it made me really kind of fall in love with this controller right out of the gate. Now, <clears throat> The mic port is a nice touch. I don't think I need to say anything about that. Being able to mute or unmute right from your controller is a nice little feature. You know, that's not gonna make or break anyone, I think, on the controller. The thumbsticks themselves. Now, I have said before in other controller videos, I'm very picky with thumbsticks. Uh, I hold my controller in kind of a weird way. I use a tall aiming stick, 
and then I put my thumb like this when I'm playing. So it's, it's not a claw, but it's kind of got this downwards kind of angle. I don't keep my thumb flat. I, I put it in the indent. And so I always like a concave uh, thumbstick. Now, the Series 2, I actually really like because one, the thumbstick is not too big. And two, I stiffen up the movement of this thumbstick underneath to, this, to its stiff, stiffest setting, excuse me. Um, and therefore I can, I tend, you know, a lot of us get tense while we're shooting. I move it very lightly and it's easy to do that because it gives some good pushback, right? The one thing that has really driven me crazy about the scuff that you should know about, and this may not affect you, right? But I want to call it out so you're aware, is you cannot adjust the tension on the thumbsticks themselves. You can change out the thumbstick. So if you like domed or convex, you know, whatever you prefer, concave. If you want different colors, if you want different heights, you can do all of that. However, you cannot adjust this movement. And this movement, even with the tall stick, right, is much more, um, I won't say loose, but it's much more kind of casual, right? You, it's very kind of uh, light compared to adjusting the Series 2. And what that meant is when I'm trying to shoot is I move too quickly. I just have too much force in my hand. So it was, it was giving me problems kind of readjusting my aim up and down. Now you can kind of play with your sensitivity and try and correct that, but now you're into a whole different ball of wax, right? With, if you're playing competitive shooter. So I, if there's one feature, I hope that scuff adds in the future, it's some way to adjust the tension on these thumbsticks, because quite frankly, that's the one thing that has held me back from using this controller for every competitive game I play. Um, I've gone back to the series two for Halo mostly, Although, you know, I do swap back and forth. Sometimes I use this for Battlefield, Call of Duty, etc. cetera. Um, I just wish I had that capability. So I won't harp on that. Um, you get my point. Um, that's the one thing that it's missing. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. There's some nice texturing that you can see kind of on the bumpers and on the triggers that make them nicer than your standard controller and kind of give you a little bit of grip as well. Um, it's just a really nice controller. Now, the big question, of course, that you're gonna ask is, is it worth the money? Which I honestly don't know. That's obviously a subjective thing for yourself. Um, if you're really into competitive shooters and you're a controller player instead of mouse keyboard and you haven't tried the Instinct, um, I would maybe give it a look if you can somehow and try it because I've really enjoyed it. I love the paddles, I love the triggers, I love the kind of ergonomics and the grip on it. It's just, like I said, it's the best controller to hold. Um, in terms of long-term durability, I can't speak to that fully yet because while I've used it for a few months, you know as well as I do if you're watching this that things can go awry after a year, two years, etc. Um, I've gone through multiple Elites and Elite 2s, but they have kind of known problems with reliability. Being that this has the foundation of a Series X, X, X and S controller and some kind of more durable components, and it's built really well, I would hope you don't run into that, but I don't know. Um, so if, uh, if anything ever does happen, I will report back and put it in the comments, but I think honestly, that is going to sum us up for the instinct pro. I've probably talked more than uh, I even wanted to, but I wanted to make sure I break down the details for you. Um, another thing on the customization is they do do all sorts of custom designs and plates too. So if you want like a specific look or color or anything like that, they have all kinds of stuff on their site you can check out and they do run deals once in a while. Like I said, I customize this one for free. So I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. If you have any questions for me, any comments, anything uh, that I didn't cover that you wanted to know about, um, you know, you can let me know. But, uh, you know, I do recommend it as a controller if you want to spend the money. I mean, all of the kind of custom controllers for Xbox or PlayStation are expensive as it is. Um, I don't know if it's a better option than the Elite 2, especially considering you can get this Elite 2 core for like 120 now a days. Um, I mean, sure, you might run into some durability issues and it may not be perfect. It doesn't have the capture button or kind of the ergonomics of the new Series X, but you're talking about a controller that gives you all the functionality with the paddles and short throw triggers and everything for half the price. So I don't know. It's up to you, of course. But if I can answer any questions, let me know. That's the Scuff Instinct Pro. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning in at Season Gaming. Uh, we've got uh, more reviews coming up. We've got a new statue on the way. I'm also going to be reviewing if you're... Uh, whether you're an Xbox, PC, or PlayStation player, I'm reviewing the Maxwell headset as well, the new Odyssey Maxwell high-end gaming headset, which has been fantastic so far. So look for that video if you're watching this. It might already be out, um, but I'll probably do that next week as well. So thank you as always. Appreciate you, and we will see you next time. Peace.